Welcome to Pyography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. In this tutorial episode, I am going to show you how to create Tia's Mandala Christmas. I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. Tia entered my 2019 Win It Draw It contest, and while she wasn't the winner, I just loved her design and decided to incorporate it into my Christmas postcard series. Well, I hope that you will like the artwork. And let's get started. The Trace Lines Burn in the trace lines using a writer pen tip. Keep the color in the light tan range. To transfer a pattern, simply print it out on regular copier paper and coat the back with graphite. Then place the paper graphite side down onto the board and trace over the design. The original pattern was square in shape. Since I am working on a rectangular board, I elongated the pattern so it would fit on the board better. Both versions will be available on my website. Once the trace lines are burned in, rub over the area with a standard pencil eraser to remove any residual graphite. The background. Use a white charcoal pencil and draw a thick line around the edges of the mandala Christmas tree. The pencil line is our no burn zone and it will help the tree stand out from the background. Next, use an embossing tool and create deep divots onto the background. This will create a starry night. I have the board lying flat, so I can exert a lot of pressure. If the divots are not very deep, the heat of the pen tip will char them. I do recommend creating a variety of divot sizes. Here is how the board looked once I was done. Now use the shader of your choice and burn the background to a dark brown or black color. Use the flat of the shader so that it will glide over the divots. Keep your pen tip in optimal position when working along the edges. This means that the front edge of your pen tip is on the edge and the rest of the pen tip is angled over the area you are burning in. This position keeps your lines crisp and clean. Rotate the board as needed to maintain optimal position while burning along edges. Also, if you can, I recommend picking the size of your shader based on the size of the area you will be working in. The larger the area, the larger the shader, and vice versa. Once you've burned around the edges of the Christmas tree, erase the white charcoal. You can finish the background first, but at some point make sure you erase the white charcoal. Then finish burning the background to a dark brown or black color. I added a thin ring of color around the design. I used a writer pen tip and burned it to a dark brown or black color. I only worked on one quarter section of the ring at a time. Then I rotated the board as needed to work on the next section. I used a micro writer pen tip and burned some dark thin lines between the ring and the design. A couple of you told me you did not like these lines and that's okay. Do artwork that you like and if you don't like the lines, then leave them out. I promise I won't be upset about it. The last thing that I did was burn around the edges of the board. The bright white color was taking attention away from the Christmas tree, which was the focal point. Now I will readily admit I'm not happy with the results. I should have done a test burn and worked out the contrast levels before I did the final artwork. The Leafy Tree Use a writer pen tip and burn in each leaf on the leafy tree. 
burn the base of the leaf darker than the edges. I am burning lots of single lines that start at the base of the leaf and fade before reaching the outer edges of the leaf. This method is a bit time consuming, but it is easy to stay within the lines of the leaves. I switched to my smallest shader, rotated the board, and burned pull away strokes along the base of each leaf. This method is faster and produces a smoother burn result. Start the stroke on the base edge of the leaf and pull it towards the tip of the leaf. Stop the stroke before reaching the outer edges of the leaf. If you do not have a small shader, then experiment around with different pen tips to see if another one will work as easily. If nothing else, you can always use a writer pen tip. Rotate the board as needed while you work to keep the pen tip in optimal position. This will help ensure crisp, clean lines and make the burning process easier. Use a writer pen tip and burn a shadow under any leaves that are touching the branch. Then burn circular motion loosely over the branches using a writer pen tip. This means that I am burning large open circles. The circular motion will give the branches a touch of color and a bit of texture. Once you get to the tree trunk, continue to burn circular motion but burn patches of it. Allow the patches to overlap a little bit. That way, you do not end up with rows or columns of burn strokes down the tree. Also, reburn another layer of circular motion along the right side of the tree to darken it up slightly. Continue to burn circular motion over the tree, adding additional layers if needed until the tree reaches the darkness level that you want it to be. The last thing I did was burn really dark lines along the outer edges of the leaves that were past the oval. I liked how it looked so much that I darkened up the lines on the rest of the leaves, but I did not make them as dark. The Christmas Tree Begin by burning a dark, thick line along the outer edge of the Christmas tree. Make sure to leave the adjacent white border alone as this helps the tree stand out. Then, darkly burn the little balls on every garland. Do this for every layer or tier on the tree. Afterwards, re-burn over both lines under the garland to darken them up. Be aware that there is only one line on every other row. Next, use a skew or rounded heel pin tip and burn thin vertical lines on the wide trim below the garland. Afterwards, use a shader pin tip and darken up the upper half of the wide trim. I am using a combination of pull away and uniform strokes for this. With the pull away strokes, start on the upper edge and pull it down towards the bottom of the trim. Stop the stroke near the halfway mark. Now, lightly burn over the large balls on the garland. Do this for every tier on the tree. I am using uniform strokes and circular motion for this. Darken up the upper edge of the wide trim. Rotate the board if needed to make burning easier and more comfortable. Use a writer pin tip and darkly burn along all of the lines on tiers 1 and 5. The two tiers are the same, but I did a lot of experimenting with the first tier. And as a result, I did a bunch of unnecessary steps. Because of that, I'm only going to explain Tier 5. Burn in every other ring. I am drawing a continuous line that crosses back and forth 
from the inner to the outer edge of the ring. I repeat this same burn method until the ring is a dark tan color. In the gaps between the groups of rings, I used circular motion to fill the area. I burned a darker band of color adjacent to the rings and let the color get lighter further away from the rings. Afterwards, lightly burn over the remaining rings using the same burn stroke that we did with the darker ones. That burn stroke was just a continuous line burned in a back and forth direction over the surface of the ring. Darken up any rings if needed. Lastly, use a shader and burn pull away strokes along the upper edge of this tier. This will create the illusion of a cast shadow from the tier above. I'm sure I don't need to say this, but just in case, do not do this step on the top tier, only the fifth tier. With the second and fourth tier, burn a dark line around the decorations, then fill the background with brown colored tiny dots. I am using a writer pen tip for this and working small sections at a time. You can use a ball pen tip if you prefer. Also, you can do all of one step before doing the next one. Either way, you'll get the same results. Burn the decorative dots to a dark brown or black color. Then burn the borders around the leaves to a brown color. I am using a writer pen tip and burning circular motion on the borders. Also, reburn along the outer edges of the borders to help them stand out. Now burn darkly along the top of this tier to create a cast shadow from the top tier. I am using uniform and pull away strokes for this. Now fill the leaves with dark parallel lines. Now let's burn in the flower. Burn the center to a very dark color. Leave the adjacent ring pale. Then burn lines along the inner flower petals. The line should radiate outward from the center of the flower. Do any fine tuning that you think is necessary to help the different elements in this tier stand out. I am reburning over some of the lines to increase the contrast. Now burn in tier 4 so that it matches tier 2. Begin by darkly burning around the designs and then add a layer of tiny dark dots. The order that you burn in the design really doesn't matter and how you choose to color your flowers is your choice also. The only thing to really keep in mind, the goal with this is to create something that has a lot of visual interest. That is done by having a lot of tonal variety and maintain some high contrast areas. I highly recommend doing a test burn which is something I should have done. The board that I am burning on is not very big, so the designs on the different tiers on the tree are small. I burned them all in using a writer pen tip. With the flowers, I used an assortment of lines to give them color. I varied how dark and how close the lines were. Finish this tier by adding the cast shadow along the upper edge. If needed, do any fine tuning to adjust contrast levels. Now let's burn in tiers 3 and 6 to finish the tree. These two tiers are extremely similar with tiers 2 and 4. The big difference is that 3 and 6 have dark canes and pale dots on the background. A green arrow is pointing to one of the items that I am calling a cane. The leaves were burned the same way on every tier. The borders are burned dark and the centers are filled with parallel lines. 
The flowers have a bit more variety, but I followed a simple guideline. I alternated the light and dark areas on the flower. For example, if the center of the flower was dark, then the adjacent ring would be pale in color. The petals touching the pale ring would be darker in color. Regardless of the darkness level, all of the flowers were burned in using a variety of lines. Sometimes the lines were in the form of circular motion, but most of the time it was just single lines. I personally find it difficult to create smooth shading using a writer pen tip. The flowers were too small to comfortably burn in with a shader. This made the lines a logical and easy choice to do for the flowers. Add the cast shadow along the top of this tier. The very last thing that I did was use the edge of a sharp knife and scrape over some of the flowers to remove some of the color. The accents. Let's begin with the leaves on the left. Use a shader and burn the leaves to a tan color. Make the right side slightly darker than the left to help each leaf stand out. I am using a combination of uniform strokes and pull away strokes to burn in the leaves. Afterwards, lightly burn over the leaf stalk and darken up the base of the leaves if needed while you work. Next, lightly burn over the canes. Rotate the board and burn pull away strokes along the upper edge of the large leaf. Start the stroke on the upper edge and pull it downward towards the bottom edge. Stop just before reaching the end of the leaf. Reburn as needed to build up the color. Now let's burn the leaves above the flower dome. Burn them to a tan color using the shader of your choice. Also, burn the base or the bottom edge so that it is darker than the top. I am using uniform and pull away strokes on the longer leaves. With the shorter leaves, I am using uniform and circular motion. Rotate the board and burn a dark tan line along what is now the upper edge of the stalk or arch that is over the domed flowers. Then burn short pull away strokes along that edge. Start the stroke on the edge and pull it downward towards the opposite edge. Burn the flower in a similar fashion to the ones on the tree. Darken the center, burn darkly around the edges, and fill the outer petal with dark parallel lines. Darken the center vein on the leaves and burn pull away strokes along both sides of the vein. Start the stroke on the vein line and pull it towards the outer edge of the leaf. Rotate the board as needed to make burning easier. Keep in mind that since I am videotaping my work, I try to keep the board rotation to a minimum because it makes it easier to watch the videos. You're not under that constraint, so do what feels comfortable. Lightly burn over the unburned petals on the flower. Make the inner edge that is touching the center of the flower darker than the outer edge. Darken up the bottom edge of the dome using a writer pen tip. I am, I am using circular motion to do this. And add the parallel lines along the border if you have not done so already. I had this vision of turning the domed flowers into a snow globe. I am using a white charcoal pencil to draw the highlight on the glass for the dome. I'm going to tell you right now that my idea did not work out, so don't bother with this step. I just wanted to explain why the charcoal was there. Burn in the small flower centers to a dark brown or black color. 
with the larger ones, fill them with tiny dots or circular motion. Then start burning in the flowers using the same techniques that we did with the ones on the tree. With the flowers on the tree, we used an assortment of lines to give them color. The lines were burned in a parallel fashion, but sometimes the lines were pale in color, sometimes they were dark in color. With the leaves, I used a shader and burned pull-away strokes along both sides of the center vein. This is the same thing that we did with the leaves to the right of the dome. Also, I burned the background to a light tan color. Rotate the board as needed while you work to keep your pen tip in optimal position. This will keep the edges of the leaves crisp and clean. As I was working, I avoided the white charcoal marks. Like I said before, my idea to create a snow globe did not work out, so do not bother with the charcoal. I eventually erased the charcoal and burn over the area. I wanted the leaves to stand out more, so I burned darkly around them and burned some gently curving parallel lines across their surface. Then I resumed burning in the flowers, again using an assortment of lines to burn them in. With the larger flowers, I used the shader to give them color. I made the base, or the center, darker than the edges. With the little decorative branches along the bottom, I burned those to a really dark brown or black color using circular motion. I used a medium ball pen tip for this, but a writer pen tip would work too. At this point, we're almost done. I used a small shader and lightly burned over everything that didn't have color. As you can see, I did erase the white charcoal and I eventually reburn over the area. In fact, I darkened up the entire background on the dome to increase the contrast levels. The very last thing that I did was use the edge of a sharp knife and scrape in a thin highlight. The purpose was to give the appearance of light reflecting on a glass dome. Considerations Some of you told me that you really liked how the artwork looked at this point. I have a problem with this look because the background or the edges of the board are so pale that it's the first thing I notice. And that is why I burned in the background. And I will admit, this still has problems. Look at how much better the image is when I digitally darkened up the edges of the wood. Now the tree pops out. I highly recommend burning the edges of the wood much darker than what I did. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and found the information informative. On my website, Pyography Made Easy, I have the written version of the tutorial along with a free pattern that you can download. I will put a link to that in the description below. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that the artwork was based on a drawing by Tia's artwork. I will, she has a YouTube channel and I will put a link to that in the description below also. Well, thank you so much for watching my video, and I will see you next week.